Looking to find collectible figures at low cost with superior customer service? Fanboy Collectibles is one of the largest retailers of high-end collectibles on the east coast of the USA. Carrying a full array of hot toys, enter-based, sideshow collectibles, 3A, and all the top manufacturers. The Mexican International package is shipped daily, all fully insured with tracking number and securely packed. Getting it to you as quickly is important, but not as important as your collectibles arriving in pristine condition. Are you looking to pre-order an item to guarantee you don't miss it when it's released? Well, Fanboy Collectibles does that too. If you've got a question about an item, give them a call, shoot them an email, or even leave them a message on their Facebook page. Fanboy Collectibles is available full-time to respond to you and to get your items to you as quickly as possible. Anyone can make a sale. Fanboy Collectibles knows the key to being successful is repeat customers. That comes from doing the right thing by you and making customer services their priority. Fanboy Collectibles. For some it's a hobby, to them it's an obsession. After all this time, Grayskull is power. Ow! Welcome to the special Masters of the Universe Focus episode of the Hot Toy Cast, the high-end action hero podcast for high-end humans. With me today is my special co-host, the indomitable Matt O'Toole, creature and effects artist whose credentials include The Hobbit and Game of Thrones. How are you doing, Matt? I'm good, thank you, Amen. I'm, um, I'm just sitting here in the, the hot Louisiana heat. Why? It's driving me crazy. Oi, oi, oi. But oh. yeah, I'm good. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Am I right in that your credentials are like, you know, you are creature and effects guy at uh, you've known me? I- I am, yeah, yeah. I've, um, I'm just working on, <coughs> excuse me, I'm working on TV show right now called um, NCIS New Orleans. You know, like a cop show, which is kind of bread and butter. And then when um, you know good stuff comes along, it's like you know, like you said, The Hobbit, Game of Thrones, cool. stuff like that. You know, uh, just finished on well a little while ago. Finished on uh, Terminator and got to meet Arnold, which was oh, yes, absolutely right. amazing, man. That was the best. It was so cool. Pictures on Facebook, so, people. Oh yeah, yeah. Pictures on Facebook. Yeah, I wore, I wore his um, wore his T-shirt. Arnold is numero uno. You know, and <laughs> got, got my photograph with him, and he was so pleased. He was like, "Let me see that picture. Let me see the bicep. The bicep looks great." You know, <laughs> he so. loved it. He loved it. He loved it. It's, uh, so, he what, is there anything in particular uh, that we've seen in your, of yours on screen that we can just point to? I always thought, I had it in my head that you kind of did the um, the big octopus kind of mural relief thing in um, Castle Black in uh, Game of Thrones. Was that you? No, no. I did. I did. Um, it was more sort of like gag work, like um, like when the little kid gets uh, <clears throat> spoilers for anyone. Well, this is like season two, I think so. But it's like when the little little kid gets stabbed in the neck with a sword. Right. Uh, that was that was one of my gags, and I also sculpted the little dragon that sits on Khaleesi's shoulder. You know, with the, for like distant oh, shots sweet. and, Khaleesi's and stuff dragon. like that. Khaleesi. Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, you know, that was never seen. It was all CG. But um, but you know, it was used for scanning and blah 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 and all that kind of. Cool. And then, you know, all, all the White Walkers we did. But that was like a collaborative effort. You know, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, awesome. you know. So let's just. See I did. <laughs> Needless I did to say, the, you're um, creative then. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. all these yeah. crazy types, you know? <laughs> all right, well, our listeners may be wondering why we're doing a massive universe. Or you may also be working, why the hell are we not talking about a toy fighter from San Diego Comic Con, man? The hot toys were. Right. Well, we will get back to that. Me and the old boys, Jeff and Mike, will get back to that in our regular episodes. But today, we're going to discuss my main man, the He Man, as he's taken some recent big steps into the grown up world of high end collectibles. We have the pop mm-hmm. culture shocks. Amazing one-quarter scale filmation line, and they're even more amazing one-quarter scale He-Man and Satchel, which is just a pre-order, by the way. Got to get that in there as well, you know, because <laughs> got to keep a nice balance there as well, you know. And and they'll check that out. I mean, they're absolutely amazing as well. So He-Man's getting into the high-end collectible market. Mondo announced that they're doing a one-six scale high-end figures. And, of course, we have Sideshow Collectibles' new one-fifth scale Massiverse line by none other than our own Steven Sajek, who we're most delighted to join us today. How are you doing, Steven? Hey, man. <laughs> Boiling here in Croatia. Is it, hot, is it hot in Croatia, too? Awful. What's the degree there like? This? What, what, how hot are we talking here? Uh, it's, it's like uh, 30s, 38 degrees Celsius, but it's... it's yeah, but it's, the worst part is, like, it's, it's so, so, so static and just... Uh, Oh, my goodness. Yeah, right. Okay, I'll bet it is. Three. All right. Uh, so, right then. As folks may know, 
uh, Stefan is best known for his work on uh, Witchblade, Top Call, uh, lo doing lots of Top Call stuff, Witchblade and Aphrodite. Witchblade, which is, by the way, finishing up pretty recently, isn't it? I mean, how do you feel about that, Stephen? <laughs> oh, uh, my run on the book was done quite a few years ago by now, and uh, right now the book is finishing up for its current bearer, Sarah Pazzini, and, you know, there are plans for the future, but for now, you know, the book is ending, and, you know, as long as they make it a great ending, I'm okay with it. Exactly. I, I mean, I, I'm, I've been a Witchblade reader since issue one, man. So I've been there right from the beginning. Even when she first appeared in that Sly Bait she little mini thing. I've been there <laughs> since the very beginning, and with Aphrodite <laughs> 9 as well. So I've been reading. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a sucker for the top count. I kept reading Witchblade. I just... It's been had its ups and its downs and stuff like that, but your run on it, of course, was one of the highlights and stuff. It was, it was great. I think yourself, Kucha and Turner were pretty good. Although anytime Joe Joe Benitez was on there, I was absolutely loving it as well. I love Joe Benitez's work. And of course, uh, you've done a lot of covers for the recent uh, run on DC Comics for He-Man and Master Universe as well. <coughs> yeah. yeah, I did uh, quite a few covers uh, on those. Unfortunately, I had to stop for a while because of my health issues and stuff, and never, because everything was getting just horribly delayed. <coughs> but but those were those were a ton of fun. Right, okay. So, and, and that along with, of course, if we go to your DeviantArt pages with your Nezibel DeviantArt page on there, we can see a load of Mass Universe pieces on there as well. So, needless to say, I think it's, safe, it's a safe bet to say you're a bit of a fan of Masters of the Universe, aren't you? Hey, that, that, that was what I was raised on here, you know. We, we didn't have a lot of things, but that, that was the cartoon of my childhood, you know. Really, I think it's a good cartoon to have for anyone's childhood, I reckon. So, right. can, you, can you kick us off then with the letting us know how, how did this actually come about and how, how did S S Sideshow approach you, I assume? I mean, was, what, 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 how, how did this actually get, get started then? Well, I was contacted by David Igo from Sideshow Collectibles and he basically, you know, he was like, hey dude, uh, so we're kind of planning on doing this Masters of the Universe line, would you be inter interested in designing and, you know, after about a second of persuasion, <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> sure, I'm, I'm game, you know. And um, it started, I think, around December when we started doing first designs and everything and... <laughs> We fit, we wrapped up Human and Skeletor really fast, actually. And uh, really, how long uh, how long was the? I think it was a few days overall. You know, just kind of I, I drew it like in two days, and then you know we, we were kind of bouncing back and forth on some notes. And beyond that, you know, we we kind of uh, you, you know I kind of sent it off, and <coughs> I pretty much forgot about it for a while because like I, I was constantly getting other design work from them. Also, you know, there were other sculptures in in, in the works, and you know, just before uh, San Diego Comic Con, they, uh, David contacts me and is like, you know, uh, he starts sending me the process shots, and you know, my jaw freaking dropped when I saw it, and I was like, holy crap. Yeah, I'll bet, man. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. <laughs> they 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 turned out beyond my wildest, you know, dreams. Because here's the thing: like, I did basically the static turnaround designs so of them just standing, and then you know, it's a special thing when when another artist then takes it and poses it, you know. Yeah. And you know, it's 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 such a special thing. And then you, another artist, you know, they they designed the the like bases for them. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and right. okay. the, because like uh, He-Man has kind of like a castle gray skull thing going up underneath him, you know, the, the whole jaws and teeth and stuff, while Skeletor has like a snake mountain thing going on, uh, on below it, and it's like, you, you see you see all of these segments just kind of come together, and you're just like oh, man very, very, very <laughs> exciting, yeah, I mean I'm looking at your sketch here now, and uh, your, your, your initial I say sketch, it's not really a sketch it's Quite, it's quite nicely rendered, actually. You human and your skeleton here, and of course, then we've got the artistic translations as well. By the way, these are on the um, Sideshow Collectibles blog. By the way, if anyone knows what we're talking about, there'll be some screens, images popping up in your devices as well as we're talking as well. So I'll be sure to put some devices, uh, some images on there as well. Of course, I'll get your permission as well, uh, and, and just check them out there because yeah, it, it, exactly that. It's it's you have your your, ter your kind of your, just your two basic front on drawings by you, Stefan. And then um, we have these other interpretations of the actual poses and by another artist. We don't know who that artist actually is, do we? Uh, I'm I'm not sure who did the pose uh, design work uh, because like there there's a list of who who worked on the sculptures on the sideshow blog also, but I'm not sure who did what part of it you know. Right. 
Okay, okay. Matt, do you want to ask one question? Yeah, they're, they're, I was just, I'm just looking right now. They're, they're beautiful, man. I mean, I've got to tell you, they're beautiful. I love the fact that you've got that because I've never liked filmation. Filmation's not my thing. You know, I think it's okay for what it is, but I'm, I'm more like the, you know, the barbarian, that the realistic take on it. You know, I don't even like Prince Adam. You know, I'm. <laughs> but I know. He wears sorry, pink, man. bro. <laughs> sorry, man. Like but, a um, boss. But, <laughs> but I love, I love that like dome you've got on Skeletor's Havoc staff. You know what I'm saying? You've got like the Havoc staff. And you got that filmation dome going on there, and then some realistic <laughs> stuff going on with the um, yeah, basically with, with like the Frank, almost the Frank Langella face with the little eyes in there. You see, yeah, I love basically that stuff, man. the idea, the idea was uh, initial. Like I, I, I don't like, uh, I don't like to fix what's not broken. You know, uh, mm -hmm. basically, I, I approach these things very much ju just to kind of serve as a translator. You know. Kind of right. take take the old stuff and just kind of detail it a bit. Give it iconography that makes sense. You know, yeah, you, see, exactly. you see little yeah. details like like Skeletor's belt basically mm -hmm. is made like of two serpents and Hordak's face was yes. you know his master. <laughs> you know, small details like that. Like you see uh, with he man I went with like he's the embodiment. Like I kind of combined all three versions where you have the classic you know filmation stuff, and mm -hmm. you have the you have the new two thousand uh, version where you know it's clearly defined that you know the power of him and it's basically the power of king grayskull you know and mm -hmm. I, I added in uh, not all sketches and design work i shown on the sideshow blog but there are also the designs with the cape because like uh i kind of always like the cape uh from the, from the movie from, right from the movie version yeah yeah, yeah. so basically <laughs> I went, I, when i when i worked on him and i really wanted to kind of show that he's kind of this reincarnation of king grayskull you know kind of kind of that kind of a very um royal very very powerful look you know and that's where i kind of approach also the iconography on him you, you see a lot of like falcon work on him like you know uh, symbolizing yeah. Zor, Zor and stuff like that and his shoulder pad is basically you know this gray skull face you know itself yeah and the sword man the sword's a beautiful take you know <laughs> the sword the, sword's I love. A great yeah, the sword, the yeah. sword is really cool as well i mean i i, I mean uh, stefan will know for well i was like a bit like i was a bit jarred by these now for some like oh, what, what's this because obviously you know we had the pop culture shock ones and i was like what the mm -hmm. hell is this, man? I just, we just did the pop culture. What the... And I was dude, like, oh, God. Dude, when I saw that pop culture one, I, my, my jaw dropped. I was like, well. Yeah, well, that's a beautiful well, one well, as that's, well, man. Well that's, well, that's money I can just write off from my chest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm all over these as well. It's, it's, it's safe yeah, to say absolutely. that I, I am all over these. I mean, this is this, this, this the thing. I, I, was a little, I was a little bit taken back. I was like, oh, God. And, and I've, I, me and Stefan over the years have kind of gone back and forth. And like, I'm like, he man's not a nice. He's not a nice. And I've always, <laughs> there's a little element kind of creeping in there. But the more. He's a more, barbarian, goddammit. He's a barbarian. But the more. <laughs> but he, he was always. It was, it's the regality of the Iron Cross on his chest that separated him from being a barbarian. And yeah, therefore, right. once you had that cross on his chest and that harness, you are dipping into Crusader territory slightly. With that, mm, cross. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of with that kind of a bit more medieval, old Englishly vibe. What, but what but you can also take it like Celtic. You know, like the Celtic had that cross going yeah, exactly. on as well. You know you what I mean? So you can like well. twist it that way. You know, and he's got that good sort of like. Uh, I mean, particularly on the sculpt there, he's got like that. He almost looks like Conan. You know, the proto Celt. You know, it's 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 awesome, man. I love it. I mean, uh, but we we do know uh, though, Stefan, that the f there are going to be some little tweaks to this, isn't hmm. there? Uh, probably I, I like I don't know uh, how much like here's the thing like there, there's a lot of material behind the scenes that you know w was never shown like I don't know if they're gonna be using uh, up some of those <laughs> because like especially with Skeletor like we we played with a lot of, with a lot of ideas because um, I had like uh, separate separate variations where Skeletor basically uh, at some point I kind of had this idea that Skeletor's face is basically just completely burned with you know the acid like the, like what they did with Keldor in the 2000 series yeah. and I'm like you know uh, in filmation his fa his skull was always just extra yellow and I'm like Maybe it's like a golden skull mask, you know. So we kind of—that's one there, that I had before. Yeah, yeah, perfect. yeah. There was a, yeah, yeah. There was a, there was a version of a design 
where I had like Keldor's burnt face, just pure face itself. Like we, we were kind of playing along with, you know, it's like what, what if we had like replaceable head, you know, so you could put like a face of just burned up Keldor and nice. then like, you know, awesome, you know and, or, 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 or like or like one where, where he has like this golden like skull mask o- o- over his face, you know, stuff like that. We, we, we did a, a lot of like different takes and small things. So I don't really know how it's going to end up, you know, in the final, final, you know, packaging, like what, what they're going to do with with all the thing, all the little options and stuff that we played around with, but you know, even if it was just this, I'm like, holy crap, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, pardon I mean, my language. You, you, you've got some. Oh, no, no, I, I think we can get away with crap. Uh, <laughs> the the the, the, the on the Skeletor. Then I mean, you know, there, there there's some intricate details there. Now, oh, by the way, on Toy Arc has some nice pictures as well. If you want to go into toyark.com, yeah, right. they've got oh, some. Oh yeah, really... I've, I've seen them. Like insane, insane detailed photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you're, 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 you, you've gone to town on like some of the filigree work and kind of the engravings along on Skeletor's armor. I mean, there's, there's not a bit of him that has that doesn't have a little bit of an engraving on there. And that's. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What's, I mean, what, where, where, do, where do these kinds of markings come from? What are they kind of influenced by? <laughs> Well, basically, you know, uh, it, it, most of the small things are just kind of there to serve as detail work, just just to kind of frame, you know, th- these are your basic decorative visual noise, you know. Mm-hmm. There, there are things that are there to be kind of iconic, you know, parts of, of the armor that are supposed to be recognizable, you know. When you see his armor, you're like, okay, that's Skeletor's armor, you know. It, it, it has a few more, f- like, free takes on the original design, but, you know, there's no doubt it's Skeletor's armor, yeah. Yeah. But the rest of it is just kind of to, to give it to give it kind of a richness, kind of a texture, you know. It, you know, it's it's your basic, uh, uh, let, let's say it's your basic Sauron approach. You know, it's a fine act of balancing what are just pure decorative, you know, uh, detailing to get your visual noise and kind of that that texture look going, and you know, the stuff that's actually there, you know, to be relevant, to be you know, relevant to this design itself. No, yeah, no, I'm l- yeah. looking at a picture here of the sword, skeletal sword on his back as well. And of course, it's oh yeah, I didn't it's, notice that. It's a yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Again, toyart.com, kids. <coughs> mm-hmm. uh, and uh, well, what pictures I'll, I'll be putting on pictures on our devices. But, but lad, I mean, look at that sword. That is some insane, cool <laughs> stuff there. And again, it's got that sword reminds me very much of the skeletal sword that was in the movie. The the glimpse of it that we saw. Yes, I know. <laughs> You know, that right. the glimpse of that sword. And actually, if you see the, 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 the edge, if you see the fully of the full on prop, that's a beautifully designed sword. If you actually see the full on mm-hmm. prop from the movie, I mean, I, I mean, basically, basically, all the props in that movie were beautifully designed. That that movie only needed a bigger budget to keep. That's the all they did. I mean, all, all, yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. And we would have had a classic, you know. I, I, I must, see. I've actually said that as well. If you do look at the movie, it is like, oh my God, you guys are aiming for something <laughs> so huge here, and just uh, case in point, the documentary. Electric Boogaloo, The Rise and Fall of Canon Films. You have to watch right, it. Right, right, right. I heard about that. You have to say, that documentary ends with the two calamities that absolutely broke Canon in two. Superman right. 4 and Masters of the Universe. They were the two high budget <laughs> movies that the, that company went into. And it's like all the pre-production work from Claudio Mazzoli, um, 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 uh, 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 Ralph McQuarrie, Bill Stout, mm-hmm. Mobius. Yeah, I mean, you've got some classics there, man. You've got David some amazing Negron. artists. You've got like five or six major big art, and there was a whole bunch of other artists produced by other artists. They were aiming to be big, and it's that, that's, that's why I do like these, these designs, because they, they do kind of feel a little bit, kind of a bit uh, informed by, by the movies. Well, and obviously, Stevens, you said earlier that you, I like the cape. I have to say, I do like He-Man with a red cape as well. It is kind yeah, of yeah. Nice. It's like a modern. It's like a. It's like a, a, a today's version of you know. I mean, I mean, you know, just beautiful, beautiful movie designs. And I tell you what, if we get them looking like that, if and when the movie ever does bloody happen, you know, would you be happy I'm with be, that? Yeah, I pre- yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, as an artist, I've, there's visual tweaks that I would change. You know, myself, nothing against you, Stephen, but like, no, 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 I get I, that. You know, yeah, I, there's little bits and pieces here. You know, for me. Personally, even though these guys would, if we saw them in real life, be massive professional bodybuilder sized guys, I almost would almost prefer it to be a CG movie to make them almost bigger, you know? I, I think, like me and you have talked about this before, I mean, just about how, like, I would just want them enormous, enormous, big, muscular dudes. But Unapologetic. I mean, I'd, Unapo- yeah, exactly. Yeah, just go for it. But I mean, I, you know, you can't have everyone in a movie that's like a professional bodybuilder, you know, because it'd just be bizarre. But, but uh, in a weird like way, I, I wouldn't mind it like that, you know. 
Well, I mean, Good we could. Stuff. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I would at least like them to be all at least the size of King Leonidas. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Kind of you know Absolutely. I mean? And I think yeah, I mean, yeah. it, do, it doesn't have to be huge, huge meathead bodybuilders, but no, dude, no. dude, you know, like the guys in 300, so even some of the dudes in the background in 300, you can see they were big, yeah. big Some of those lads. dudes are massive. And, yeah, and yeah. It, 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 considering what they did with, you know, Lord of the Rings and Hobbit stuff, you know, it's it's perfectly easy nowadays to, to use some effect magic to just kind of basically, you know, increase the yeah, size it's possible. of people. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll look at um, the, new, the new Terminator with... Um, the fella that, that did his body double, you know, that guy was, you know, cool guy. He'd actually be pretty a pretty good, uh, you know, Terminary guy himself, to cast, yeah. you know. But, um, yeah, he was a big old dude. Massive. I mean, this guy's walking around with just a sock covering himself up, you know. So, we, we, you know, all the girls on set are just looking at him going, oh, you know. And he's just walking oh. around. I was like, and I, I was looking at him just going like, oh, but with envy, you know. All I can but, say. Uh, you know, enormous physique, you know. <laughs> All I can say about the potential of the new Masters of the Universe movie, the moment I saw them post a picture of Battle Cat concept, I was like, oh. yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very Please. much. Because from, yeah. from the get-go, my greatest fear was always this. Bingo. Yeah. T- today's, today's, you know, approach to all these movies. I mean, l- look at the new, newly shown, you know, X-Men first class redesigns. Like, it has nothing mm-hmm. to do with Apocalypse when, when you see the guy. <laughs> You know, no, he looks like it, a Doctor Who villain, man. Exactly. He totally does. <laughs> exactly. And the thing is, like, when I heard them, when I heard they were gonna make a new human movie, I was like, oh shit! Like, they they are so going. I, my my great fear was like, they're they're gonna they're gonna give him like a spaceship and call it the Battle Cat Battle Cat or something Uh-oh. because somebody's gonna go like somebody go, is gonna go like our, our focus groups say that. Uh, person riding on a tiger isn't gonna sell you know it's just, yeah and guardians those of the were galaxy like, was big so they'll be yeah. like oh no you know it's gonna be in a spaceship and it's green with yellow stripes yeah <laughs> exactly exactly that because you know you know that mindset you have seen that mindset oh yeah oh yeah and, i'll work in that mindset oh and, i know it every and, day and it's, so, and it's so just oh man <laughs> the yeah, fear well, I mean, is when, real when you see what happens to something like you know gi joe when when, when you, when you see how that when, when you see how that stuff throws down uh, Transformers, well, yeah, that kind of goes that way as well. But it's, again, again, you know, there's, <coughs> there's only so much you can do with robots hitting each other. Right, right. It's, but but this like, is what, this is why I appreciate Marvel's uh, Marvel movie school of design. Like they, yeah, don't, exactly, yeah. They don't reinvent the character; they just translate it. And I think that that's that has been my biggest fear with He-Man. Because mm-hmm. because He Man isn't is isn't as um, out there as say Spider Man and the other bigger characters, I'm worried that because of this, that studios will be more inclined to put their Compton. own like look and her whole spin in it. And yeah, when, when you know look, looking at like Stefan's designs here, I mean I I would be ha- it, it's wouldn't it, there would be things that I would like I would like a little bit more savagey if I was to go for movie kind of stuff a little bit of this, but this mm-hmm. is an excellent way to go. This would be an excellent way to go. But and and and. Uh, when I saw that Battle Cat uh, image, just like it says, Evan, I was like, oh my god, it's Red Armor. It's Red it's, Armor with, with a spike it's like, on the front. It's like, there's a chance. It's like, this, this, this could, like, not suck. It, it, exactly. <laughs> it, could, it, 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 it could not suck. And I think well, with, with, these, with, with these statues kind of out there at, at, in such a prominent... You know, I, I didn't go to San Diego Comic Con this year, but I watched myself and my girlfriend watched a lot of the footage on YouTube and stuff like that. Oh, you yeah, know, me IGN, too. Yeah, yeah. IGN nerdists, you know, pixel dance walkthroughs, all these kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and these, these sideshow He Man and Skeletor's man, you see them propping up nearly on every single walkthrough. They, people yeah, they're look, big and prominent, man. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. Pe- pe- people paid attention. And I think, in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. this kind of breaks a wall that. When I initially saw, I was like, oh, I think it's a bit too soon. But actually, on, on hindsight, looking at it, I was, I was wrong on that assessment. And I'm now thinking that this, having designs like this that are, that are interpretations, that are big and extremely highly well done with someone like Steph and, and, and with Sideshow. You know, when you get these yeah. two kinds of things together and it do, it's done such to a high quality, it's like, well, look, this is what He-Man can look like too. This is with exactly. This, look at this. the battle cat and the He-Man on the one that you did the poster for, man. I mean, you know, there and the poster's <laughs> beautiful as well. I got to tell you about that, man. That's that's oh, an you. amazing piece, dude. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's yeah, that statue. That. Look at look at that statue translates into 3D. You know, the battle cat, how perfect he looks. Exactly. You know, and He-Man. You know, it, just classic figure style. How how well that. And also, uh, you know, Daniel Benedict's um, 
fan film. You know, I haven't, no one's seen it yet, but just from those few little images you see of getting a buff guy, putting him in the, the arm, he looks great, you know? Yeah, that dude looks, re- I, I, I love the armor. I think he looks, I think he looks badass. Now. Yeah, he you looks know, I all right. I haven't actually watched the thing yet. I'm always a bit, I'm always a bit like, oh, I don't know about fan movies and stuff like that, but I'll, I'll yeah, I'll yeah, totally, yeah. Out, the, the yeah, guy, the I'll watch star. it, you know. But I think I think these these break that wall. I mean, was that a discussion, uh, Stefan? I mean, what 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 were were sideshow like? I mean, <coughs> would this be? I mean, who knows what kind of conversation? But would this be sideshows pitched to like, hey, we can design cool He-Man stuff for a movie? Was, was that kind of mentioned at all? Well, basically, the idea was to kind of make a very movie-like approach to the design. You know, right. just kind of stuff right. that that would be like, what if we could translate it to a movie? And you know. With me on board, basically, you know, for me, priority was to keep it recognizable, to keep it, you know, for us old school nerds, when we see it, like, you know, <laughs> there's no doubt what we're looking at, you know. And, Perfect, yeah. You know, and uh, that was basically the approach from the get-go. Like, they, they were like, you know, they, 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 they that was pretty much uh, the foundation of the whole idea. So, you know, these were the first two among quite a few right now. It is. I mean, it's working on statues. I mean, I've, I've, I've done it myself, obviously, with pop culture shockings. But working on statues and seeing the different little stages that just an, an evolution of an idea and then the final product, it's, 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 quite, it's, it's quite special. And like you said, it there, keeps, like... It keeps you constantly excited. Yeah, exactly. And it's like you said there, I mean, you know, you had a guy that took it to your transition, then they added these bases, these great bases. I mean, that Snake Mountain base is amazing. You know, I really, really, really like oh, yeah. it. And it just a style design wise as well. You, you've you've kind of like right. So you're picturing him as a kind of a more kind of Celtic Viking esque type of a character because you've got a lot of Viking um, kind of uh, if, uh, engravings and stuff like that on the base and even on the on the on the mouth on the top of Castle Castle Grace called well, You've got like little kind of uh, Vikingy almost Norse kind of Celtic engravings. The iconography, huh? Yeah, the iconography. That and was that was very much uh, like. For me, that that became kind of a like a go-to thing after I've seen the new uh, the 2000 series where they had uh, King Grayskull battle Snake Man. You know, yes. uh, when I saw that episode, I was like, "Oh man!" Like, I, I want to now. I want to see this show. Also, yeah, yeah. Wasn't <laughs> I love that as well. There, yeah, that episode <laughs> gets watched a lot in this house. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, okay. I just take a drink of water. There. Um, okay, I think we, we could probably go on to some listener qu- uh, questions now. So, I mean, Matt, do you want to take take care of one of our listener questions? Uh, yeah, let me see. Let me see. Um, okay, we got one from, uh, well, I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Tor Bjorg or Bjorg, I think. I, I, I'd sure say Bjorg, yeah. Bjorg, yeah, Tor Bjorg, yeah. and he asks, um, would it be possible to remove any of the armor from He-Man, like the shoulder pads? And also, like a little second question is, why is Skeletor not blue, is his question. Uh, so, oh, uh, I don't know if the armor is removable. I think, uh, like, we, we did have those conversations, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at this point, I don't know, I, I didn't, you know, Touch the statues; they were behind the glass thing, so I couldn't right, them right, properly. Right, right. <laughs> well, coming coming from someone who does that kind of stuff, like because I do mold making and casting and that kind of stuff, I would doubt highly that that shoulder pad will come off. Yeah, I reckon that'll here. be a it'll be it'll be a, a static thing, and it'll be it'll be in there, you know. So other than with the Dremel, you know, because <laughs> the only mixed media on, on these statues appears to be the capes. It's the capes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, is yeah, yeah. Skeletor's hood sculpted, or is that a, is that a cloth? <clears throat> I think the hood it looks was sculpted. sculpted, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, right. Okay. Okay. Cool. And right, then the well, second bit is why Skeletor not blue? He asks as well. Oh, yeah. oh uh, well, uh, the why Skeletor not blue? Well, you know, the answer is simple. Uh, it, you know, when you're doing these kind of movie style uh, kind of translations, uh, you you gotta subdue the colors a little, you know, mm-hmm. and um, basically we kind of worked around to what color would just, you know be there but not be too imposing you know because um you know we we, we try to make him look more menacing you know yeah and, oh, and when we did. yeah and when mm-hmm. we went with the original color it really clashed you know like uh, you you have like this apocalypse bo- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it, it got a little ivan Uzi. <laughs> All right, then. Okay, so Magpie from Sideshow Freaks, he asks, how deep into the character roster are, the, are you guys planning to go? 
uh, or are they waiting to see how well Heeman and Skelter will sell before they plan further ahead? <laughs> Well, we do. We did do other designs already, so I don't think I'm supposed to be, you know, giving out information uh, of course, no, on which we're understand. done. But there are more. There are more. There are more. Spill planned. it. <laughs> there are more planned here. About it. Well, I think well, I think uh, Beastman could be a very interesting choice. I was just going to say, man, Beastman would be amazing. I'd love to see that. Yeah. yeah so we'll, mm -hmm. see, we'll see Steven's uh, uh, job on, uh, on Beastman. That would be very interesting. Okay, Matt, next question. Um, okay, so um, what's this? King Grayskull, also from Sideshow Freaks, asks, there is a rumor about alternate heads. If this is indeed true, will there be based on any familiar designs, vintage, 2000X, DC, etc.? <laughs> Um, personally, you know, I, as I said, like I, I'm personally hoping for alternate heads because there were alternate designs. So you know, can't, can't, can't really you know share much of more course. than that before right. you know before sideshow people decide because. You know, but right, but uh, I mean, you mentioned before like possibly like had, the Keldor were, head there, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, there there were designs. So at this point, like I don't I don't know how the figures are assembled, whether or not some parts are detachable or something. Probably, but I, you know, at this point, um, it, my guess is as good as yours. Right, right. That co that that, that He-Man head looks. I mean, that looks like a Conan sculpture. You know, to me, like paint that hair black, and you've got like a perfect Conan face as well. I love it, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I I personally prefer how He-Man's face looks in Stefan's drawing. He's a little bit. I mean, I don't like seeing He-Man quite that rugged. Quite as thin-lipped. Yeah, um, he's, he, he's, yeah, he's, he's not just he's just a little he's just a little wide as well because if you look at Stefan's drawing, he's a he's a bit he's a little bit better looking, he's a little bit more yeah, handsome. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm hoping that will get a little bit more like <laughs> like, like Stefan's face there. It's still right, right. very aggressive and moody looking, but mm -hmm. just a little bit more handsome because again, I, I just I like separating He-Man from Conan a little bit more. Looks right, 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 right. It's right, so right. easy to make that mistake and just have a bland looking Conan. So I, yeah, I, that's I, true. I like He-Man to be a little bit. A, a, a heavy set face, but not as yeah, a, li as a, li a little less bloodthirsty, a little more, you know, a little kinder. Po kinder, not as yeah, not as scarred. <laughs> not as scarred. Because no. he's got all that scars. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I get what you mean. I get where you're coming from. And you probably wouldn't get a sunburnt either, he man. I would imagine as Conan. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I would imagine the power of Grayskull would, you know, give him a good old sun factor protection. Give him a little flash. <laughs> no, because he is blonde. You know, he might have fair skin. You don't know. Hey, That's right. Hey, look, I'm a, I, he I'm, I'm electric a blue. I'm not even white. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty transparent myself. Yeah. Okay, right then. So the next question. King King Grayskull. Okay, it's uh, right, so here we go. Oh, he goes on to ask. Oh, same guy actually. Same King Grayskull actually goes on to ask another question. Any chance Sideshow can add some artworks like the PCS does? They're a great addition. So I mean, uh, like like some prints, Stefan. Maybe. I mean, would would you be? I mean, is is that I, something you'd be up for you know, for doing? Maybe like a couple of. Uh, prints to accompany these because the Sideshow are doing that now they've done that with their um, their sea the sea witch and, and uh, their um, dead court of the dead stuff as well haven't they oh yeah I've seen that stuff yeah yeah <laughs> Stefan would for, you be up for doing some uh... Uh, personally I don't mind like for, for me that's not a problem it's just I don't, I don't know like how they're going to be handling the whole thing you know as far as I know the court of, court of the dead is their uh, like uh, company IP like that they, yeah, they exactly. created yes. that whole thing so it makes sense for them to kind of push you know also prints and stuff like that as far as this goes like at this point I really don't know like this as, as I said this is my these are my first you know design works that were made into <laughs> figures you know <coughs> so you know only time will tell it for the for now you know have you designed any kind of figures and products before uh, no, I, I used to mostly stick to you know video game design and stuff like that. Uh, but the, 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 this was this was basically my first few, just you know for sculptures and these kinds of things. Excellent. Excellent. Well, was there any kind of different? Was there any kind of change in your difference of thinking when you actually were were the, the thinking about this stuff? Oh, I mean, how did that differ? Say from like, say like doing a video game, or was there a difference? There's no real difference. I mean. Um, Basically, most of the modeling nowadays, uh, a lot of it has kind of switched from traditional modeling to ZBrush modeling. So, yes. Yeah. Basically, when, when you're dealing with ZBrush, you know, the sky's the limit at this point. Yeah, you, okay, cool. it, also good for, for um, armor and machinery, you know, the oh, ZBrush, because yeah. you can, you, oh, can yeah. you know, duplicate stuff and flip it so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, 
sculpting it twice or sculpting something even you know a, a friend of mine does a lot of zbrush and i just sit there with my jaw open just watching him think you know hating him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, wouldn't you love to have the time to like just explore uh, all this stuff I, I've, I've absolutely oh, but... zbrush is fast to learn like it's really easy it's, it's, you yeah, it's like quite spr- user-friendly, yeah. You spray kind yeah. of blobs, don't you? You're essentially spraying. Yeah, yeah you, basically, you, 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 take, you take yourself, you know, depending on what method you're using, you'll either, you know, start from a simple sphere and just start, you know, pulling and pushing and modeling, or you're going to make yourself a structure, and you're going to make yourself a low-poly model. You know, there's a mm-hmm. bunch of methods, that they're pretty intuitive. Like, you know, Did it's you- one of the easier programs to learn. Did you use any of that in like your Witchblade illustrations, like the gauntlets and things like that? Oh that yeah, in uh, oh yeah, in Witchblade, but especially in Ravine. Like in Ravine, I did. In, ah, like, the dragons, enti- of course. Oh yeah, I did entire dragons. I did armors. Uh, I did a lot of stuff for Ravine. You know, weapons cool. sometimes. You know. Ravine, by the way, is your creator. Your, your Ravine, by the way, is for, for listeners, is your creator-owned title, I believe, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's it's an older one, a fantasy comic. Oh, graphic. Cool. Okay, do you want to take the next question, awesome. Matt? Yeah. Um, so what we got? Um, so <coughs> Jack P. Starrow from Facebook asks, uh, regarding Skeletor's face and his eye sockets, they have lids. Is this something you feel? Well, it's kind of what yeah. we touched on before. Yeah, yeah. Feels like a mask. Uh, or are you aiming for a Frank Langella look, which is, still has some tissue on it? <laughs> oh, uh, it's kind of a half-half. You know, it's basically this, the whole idea of basically you know, Keldor's face. You know, yeah, and yeah. still somewhere in, in there. So you know, it, it, you could you could call it kind of a, kind of like cross influence, you know. Right. You, right, you do right. wonder in a movie that because it's like you know, Gary Goddard's. I mean, I, I personally think Skeletor's mask in the movie is awful. I mean, because I just I don't. Like, <laughs> you know, he he moves his nose and his whole cheekbone rises up, and it's just exactly it's just, it's just exactly. impossible. And you know, eyes that far back into the skull when you get that yeah. rage around the skull, it just it's just anatomically always bothered me. And it's like well, well bones don't move when you when you the muscles move over the bones, right? Yeah, That's exactly. always one of my big things it, 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 as well. It just always looked rubbery and flinty, yeah. and, and and you know <laughs> I, you you see then that they had a, another design previous to that where he had kind of jaws and it was a far more skull type thing. It was but I but I right. love the but I love the movies Havoc stuff. Yes, it, yes. Oh yeah, the Havoc stuff's great. God, actually, yeah. that thing is just. Mm. You know, I have the designer's name of that. Actually, I have the actual guy who actually made those, 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 those uh, staffs. And he says he can make. He them. nailed it. Yeah, no, the the the, the, the iconography. <coughs> the, I mean, I love the, the the movie sword. I really liked He-Man's sword as well. I always loved mm-hmm. that design. Thought it was really good. But um, <coughs> one of the things about it was obviously seeing his eyes. Now, I've, I, the the more I kind of see this, and obviously with, with Stefan's uh, uh, statues here and designs as well, <coughs> having eyelids on on Skeletor probably would. <coughs> give him more emotion if the rest of the face is really excellent because we're, 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 yeah. it, it, it's so hard for us to kind of course we're so used to seeing the Frank Langella skeleton we're seeing like well, and I, th- yeah. I think we're probably put off by eyes but I think if done well maybe the eyes would be uh, a better route to go I think and it could totally one of, and it's one of those things where you know in a creative director's you know hands you, you could do crazy things you know like when he starts using spell work and stuff like that the, the, the eyes would just completely disappear and the sockets would become void you could do some crazy stuff like that yeah. you know you know there's yeah, there's a lot of things great. you know yeah yeah, that's that's very cool. I love that. I re- really really like that. So, all right, that's kind of it for our listener questions. Europe listeners, look no further than space. Space, search for popular action figures and collectibles ends. The best service possible and steady accessibility by email and telephone is one of the top priorities at space. They carry a wide range of collectibles, not only from major brands like Sideshow, Hot Toys, Enter Bay, NECA and McFarlane, but they also specialize in the exotic and small manufacturers. A very important department to them is their 1-6 scale section, which is currently getting bigger and bigger, offering lots of clothes, bodies, head sculpts and accessories. Hot Toys is of course one of their specialities, so you can pre-order all newly announced figures from their web store. They often have Hot Toys figures in stock earlier than any other dealers. They are also the best source in Europe for convention exclusives. Space loves what they do, so you can depend on them for secure packaging, ensuring your items reaches you in mint condition. In stock items get processed normally the same day. Pre-ordering customers will be notified in advance once an item arrives in stock and before it gets shipped. Space is located in Germany and offers clearly arranged shipping flat rates to all European countries. On most destinations, you can even get free shipping. For EU customers, this of course means that you will not be surprised by any customs visa or import taxes. 
Space is serving us collectors with the finest items for over 15 years. If you're located anywhere in Europe, do go to space. www.space-figures.com I was just going to like ask them, I mean, what are, you, what are you guys thinking about? Because like, it's like, I've, I've, I've said this before, on previous podcasts, we shall, which will remain unnamed, uh, that He-Man he doesn't have any huge intellectual... <laughs> He-Man doesn't have any huge intellectual property. And yet, you know, you go to San Diego Comic-Con 2015, and our old boy, man, is punching way above his waist. He He's really no, is, huh? No movies, no, yeah. um, you know, no, no cartoons, no major video, no video games, period. Just, you know, just got a comic. Just got a comic. And it's just, it's pretty <clears> impressive <throat> that it's, it's, it's a property that seems to punch... So far up its weight. The Mattel boost is a big draw every year. We got bloody Snake yeah. Mountain, so, you know, no one oh, cared man. about the Hot Toys TIE Fighter when we saw Snake Mountain. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I just a bit flipped inside out when I saw that Snake Mountain, man. I was, yeah, I mean, that was crazy. And I some mean, of the figures, and Thundercats as well, man. Some of the figures, I mean, it's amazing, really. Oh, what yeah. Got I mean, what, My what, wallet's what, what, screaming what, at me. What do you think, Stephen? Where, 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 what do you think about the way the brand is kind of going and stuff like that? Are you kind of... What, what, what do you think that's down to? Why do you think that it's... It, it, given there's no entertainment, why is this brand still doing so well? And we're getting companies like Sideshow and, of course, Mondo. Mondo. The guys from Mondo oh, awesome. yeah. doing all those amazing yeah, yeah. prints. The guys from Mondo doing all these amazing prints and artwork. They've... they've Started dipping their toe into the action figure element. They did high end uh, 1 6 scale uh, Ninja Turtles based on the original uh, Kevin Eastman Ninja Turtle designs. And they did an Iron Giant. And, and now they're doing Masters of the Universe. And we, we, we're yeah. getting the impression that they're going to be a little bit more based on the, the vintage style. But it looks like they're going to be a little bit of an art interpretation there as well. I was just wondering what, what do you think, Steve? Stephen? Where do you think all that is going? I don't know, but I'm happy about it. <laughs> like, exactly. I, like, you know, we, we do see a bigger resurgence of, like, the 80s stuff making a big comeback, you know. Mm -hmm. So it does make sense, you know, in the current atmosphere. You have all these, you know, old, old childhood stuff that's just being remade and rebooted everywhere. So, it, you know, it makes sense that these companies are just kind of trying to, you know, cash in on their IPs. And, you know, Masters of the Universe, like, there's still a huge and living fan <coughs> base for it, you know? Oh, I yeah, mean, thriving, I mean, yeah. I, I loved, I loved the 2000 cartoon, you know, also, yeah. it, 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 it was far more, like, story-driven than the original series, which, to me, like, I would have loved it if, if it had more, like, one-off episodes that, the, like, the original series had, you know, but still, you know, it was, it was good entertainment, it was, it was a good cartoon. And I wouldn't mind seeing a new cartoon being made. I wouldn't mind. I would love seeing a movie being made. You know, it's you know, it's kind of one of those things that that, that cartoon above any other for me was my childhood. Those toys were my childhood. You know, if yeah, you were to have yeah. a new cartoon, what kind of direction would you like it to see? I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of 2002 as well. I mean, I I, I, really, I really thought that cartoon was a fine cartoon. I love the action. I love the big punches and stuff like that. It's really great. But where, what, what kind of a cartoon? I'll ask you, Stephen, first, and then obviously Matt, I'll ask you as well. So what do you think? Where, what, what, would you, what would you like to see in a new cartoon? What kind of style should we go? Think it, I mean, there's obviously what we'd like, but there's obviously then what would work best for the brand. You know, there's two different things. Mm, that we'd love. Mm. I'm sure we'd all love a, a big high-end cartoon. That was a like cross-between filmation in 2002 with hard punching and stuff, but we, we probably might not get that. So I'd just be wondering, from a, from a personal standpoint, Stephen, and then from a kind of a, a kind of a more marketing standpoint, what do you think would, would need to happen there from us? From the cartoon? Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to say from a marketing standpoint, like it, because probably for me, separating my own, you know, preferences from what might may be technically best for the series, for you know, the brand itself. <laughs> You know, from my own personal standpoint, like I would, I would have just as be, just been happy to see a third season of the 2001. You know, I was, I was really looking <laughs> yeah, me forward. Too. I, I was looking forward to Hordak. You know, I was like, yes, Hordak, yes. You know, I was like, <laughs> nope, <laughs> damn it. You know, so that I, I was actually really happy with the 2000 series. I loved the aspect of Adam being a kid who transforms into a more adult version because you know it made the whole transformation thing more relevant more you know plausible you know I, I loved a lot of those things you know i loved the character development in that series i, I loved it all you know i really 
basically the only thing that that series for me was missing I would have loved to see kind of one-off adventures that weren't, you know, a part of a whole narrative, you know, itself, you know. That that was basically what, what I love what I loved about the old filmation series where you had all these different writers kind of take the reign and just kind of take, you know, different smaller stories and take, you know, have, have adventures. Basically, you know, basically, you know, Severed Sword of Conan stuff in the He-Man universe where you have these all sorts of adventures that weren't, you know. I like it. Yeah, that's cool. Mm, that would have been good, yeah, yeah. Go on, Matt. Um, for me, I guess, I guess, I mean, if you if you want to if you wanted to take the the brand to like you know the the kid dollar you know or the family dollar uh, and take it to a commercial level, you know, you, you you'd, if you've got Pixar involved, you know, someone like Pixar not doing it, not doing it like a a, a cartoony kind of Pixar-y type thing, but but you know, like their stories are awesome, their animations awesome, and that. That'd be that the one way, but you know, on a personal level, no man. I want it. I want it to be like, uh, you know, sort of like. Remember that L movie, that Guardians of the Gahool or whatever oh, it was called. Oh man, that was great. Yeah, that was, you know, see, imagine, that was my boy Zack Snyder there again doing it. Yeah, so imagine you got animation like that with violence like that, so you never actually really see too much like hacking and slashing, but there is kind of intense fighting and battles and aerial battles in the rain and all that kind of. I'd want it like that personally, you know. So you put be, a, you, you put know. a good design style on that on that. Yeah. Just keep, keep keeping it away from uncanny valley of you know keeping it too realistic and. You you, you, yeah, yeah, exactly. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've still got a slight design tweak, I guess, like a little bit more realistic than uh, Emiliano's um, new stuff he's been doing. You know what I mean? But kind of like that, maybe. But yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't feel a bit old. Heavy stylization, but a bit kind of aggressive and beefy kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know about heavy stylization, but just just enough to take it out of that uncanny valley stuff, like like Stefan was saying. You know, that kind of because you don't want it to be, uh, you don't want it to look. Like those dead eye, you know, like uh, um, uh, what was it? Like the mate, remember those Matrix cartoons? Yeah, oh, Animatrix. Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, the Animatrix, right? And then all of a sudden, it had like those guys fighting, which was beautiful, but it had that kind of weird, realistic stuff that no yeah, one. Yeah, I'm not. Know? I would something. I would like something with a bit more style than that. For if I was exactly, it'd have to be more stylized than that, so you could get to grips with it, you know. So. But yeah, that's what I would want. I think that would be awesome, you know. And of course, and of course, with the movie Warcraft coming out, isn't there dudes with tigers? Who isn't there dudes riding on with tigers in Warcraft? Oh, dude, yeah, I'm if, sure if, there if is. That, <laughs> if, that, if that movie makes it well, like sky's the limit. I, I think for studios, they're gonna start grabbing all the just the wildest uh, IPs out exactly, there and trying to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so you I. Think, I you think Warcraft will actually be good for He-Man? And, and I think it's going to be actually excellent for He-Man. Like it's I the hope best, so. I it's hope the best so. thing that could happen for He-Man because Warcraft, Warcraft's uh, visual style <laughs> is so out there, you Ooh, know, yeah. for fantasy. It's like it's so untamed. You know, if that if they can pull off that, yeah, and you know, make it believable, make it you know, a, a worthy method, a worthy look for a, for telling a story. I think I think we're gonna see. You know, basically, you always got, kind of gotta have that one movie that's gonna break the style barrier. You know, like like what when Zack Snyder did the 300, and then later on yeah. everybody did that whole you know shtick with you know. Both yeah, the and Sin City, you know, with Frank Miller as well, that kind of same yeah. style. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the thing is as well, if you look at the, you know, in San Diego when they showed some of the armor, you saw the oh pictures. Oh, my God. Yeah. You saw it was kind of like slightly chunky and stylized, but not so stylized that it was like out of the realms of possibility. It was just these kind of chunky. And I think if they did it like that, man, it'd be perfect, you know. And that's really, the universe film like that. Just really slightly chunky. Of, they really reminded me of the Mystic uh, Mystic Legion from Four Horsemen seeing all that armor. Oh, they totally do. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. my God, what, what are the boys thinking? And that, like, they totally did, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Probably thinking great which is, mind, Yeah, which is which is a, a good compliment to them because they, you know, I, I was listening to an interview with those guys and they were saying how they want to keep, you know, classic barbarians, classic knights, classic. And I thought, yeah, they've they've nailed it, man. That looks great. Because you, know? oh, you were at you were at San Diego Comic Con this year, Stefan. I mean, you 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 saw those armors up close and oh and yeah, the shield, the shield designs and the s designs and the swords and everything. I mean, Dude. As soon as I saw those, and then I saw your statues, I was like, "Can you walk it in?" When you when you when you see when you see that up close person, you know, when you, when you see those armors, you're like, like they 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 succeeded. They 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 trans they tran translated these outrageous outlandish armors that are in the games. Yeah, they you know, like you can still see like when when you see the in-game models and you and you see the details on those armors, and you're like, 
it's all there. It's a little bit reproportioned, but it's all mm-hmm. there. You know, it's still recognizable. Yeah. And if that movie makes it, if that movie, I'm telling you, like that movie is basically gonna, uh, you know, it's it's gonna help a, a Masters of the Universe movie sink or swim. You know. Yeah, hopefully open the floodgates, right? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, we me can, too. We can man. only me hope so. Our fingers crossed. I mean, if the future is bright for Masters, man, we got these high-end collectibles from all these great companies. You know what I mean? I mean, gee, I, I, yeah. I, honestly, I never thought I'd see the day where I would have. It's like, a good time to be a nerd. It's it a, is a good time to be a nerd. It's, it's the nerd golden era. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are in the golden age of nerddom. Exactly. But Eamon, what do you think about those mondos, man? I didn't ask you. What do you think about those from what um, you've seen? Well, I've I've only seen some headshots. Yeah, I mean, and they, yeah. They seem they seem a little tame. They yeah, do. The the hair's a little sort of short and kind of bobby on He-Man. Yeah, it's, huh? it's all it's all it's all about Prince Valiant, and it's like I hate yeah. that translation. <laughs> that, he, he says he has surfer hair. He does not have Prince Valiant hair. He has exactly, surfer hair. Exactly, exactly. And it always bothered me. The Prince Valiant hair it was like, damn you, Filmation, your shortcuts. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the thing with Filmation. I love Filmation. I love, when I'm watching Filmation cartoon, I'm I'm both loving it and loathing it. Right, it's exactly. Like, just, yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, come on. You gave Trapjaw one arm. You could have given Man at Arms no one arm. <laughs> well, why? You, you, I you just. If ever I watch them, I just and, and people are gonna like hate me. I'm sorry, but whenever I'm watching, I'm just I just instantly want Orko to just die. You know. No. Well, I mean, Orko in 2002, I liked. I, tell, I liked him in 2002. He was better. He was better. He was better. What but, do you think, Stephen? Yeah. Orko in 2002. Uh, well, he, he was more more detailed, you know, more kind of ornate. But yeah. you know, or, Orko is Orko, you know. It's yeah, uh, still yeah, aggravating. Work in a movie? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. Uh, I here's the thing, like I, a part of me, you know, is like, you know, there's no way we're gonna see an Orko in a movie. And then a part of me is like, you know, if they're gonna put Battle Cat, there's a chance they're gonna actually put. They're they're actually gonna go and start putting other characters, you know, properly inside. So who knows? I mean, well, it depends I, whether the battle cat spoke or not, I suppose, yeah. right? You know. <clears throat> I've, I, I've changed my mind about that over the years. I'm, I'm open to him talking now. You I, are? I, I'm open to it. I mean, I'm, I'm open to it. It's not my preferred right. choice, but I am open to it. It really depends on the tone of movie they're aiming for. Yeah, exactly. Hey, yeah. At, at, the end, at the end of the day, it still beats Snarf. It does yeah. beat Snarf. Snarf is Anything annoying. beats Snarf. I mean, he just told Lino what not to do. Mind you, Lino was always getting into mischief. Lino's not a very good hero at all. He's always meant no. to be rescued. He's visually a good hero, but he's not practically a good hero. <laughs> well, Listen, I think he, we are... he, has, he has his cool sequence of drawing sword and shut exactly, up. We can, we can exactly, exactly. deal with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But imagine imagine sticking Orko next to your design, Stefan, of those... Of those uh, He-Man and Skeletor statues, he's just not going to work. You know what I mean? I don't know. What's Steph- what's Steph- I bet you could design a mean oracle. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, make him more wizardly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. It's, it, 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 would, it would be an interesting challenge. I mean, yeah. there, are, there are certain characters that, you know, when you're doing a series, you know, when you're doing a whole line of redesigns, you know, you get to some, you know, characters where you're like, how do you make this plausible? And there are ways, like you Mechanic. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like me- about, you know. Me- mechanic, <laughs> mechanic actually should, would, wouldn't be really that big of a problem, you know, right, like um, right. the whole transformation part. I mean, you've, you know, we, we've all kind of been familiarized with the whole com- C- C- CG stuff that they did with Transformers, you know, you basically right. trans- translate some of that with some of the classic design and pff, it's easy, you know. Yes, yeah, mush it together. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's relatively yeah. easy stuff, you know, but there yeah. are characters that you, you kind of look at and you just, um, okay, how do we make this work? <laughs> <laughs> Cyclone spinning waste. I can see it now. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be funny. All right, then. Well, I think that's all the time we have for today, as we're all very, very, very busy chaps. And actually, with the busyness in mind. So, Stefan, what are you working on right now? Well, actually, I'm just finishing up a design for Sideshow in this oh. same in this same oh, awesome. line. Oh, and... oh hey, well, isn't that poignant, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, yeah, lovely. <laughs> We'll we'll see, of course, how it works and all, how how it ends up. But yeah, there's in this line, I've, I've done a few more designs, so you know, fingers crossed. And uh, you know, beyond that, it's just comic work and stuff like that. You know me. Cool, and we'll we'll see you popping up again in the final issue of Witchblade, no doubt. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> good, 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 good. And you, Matt, what are you working on at the moment? 
Um, I'm um, doing, I, I mean, I just landed a, a whole year's worth of uh, TV series, the NCIS New Orleans, which is that cop show. And I don't, you know, I'm not big into cop shows, but it's so like, much you know, blood. It's like decent money, and you know we get to do autopsy corpses, and cool. you know, and that kind of stuff. But the good thing is, is, is a weird uh, connection, weird segue is, I'm working with um, Scott Bakula, you know, the guy from uh, hey, Archer. What was that? Yeah, what, what's that TV series where we went through time? Uh, Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap, exactly. Yeah. So Scott Bakula from Quantum Leap, and he's married to Teela from the from the you know the the, the, the the 87 movie so of course he is i never knew yeah, he was married it, to uh, what's, what, yeah. what's some chelsea what's field? name chelsea, chelsea field. field yeah yeah so it's so of course the other day on set i'm, I'm sitting there chit-chatting to him and um and a uh, mass universe comes up as it often does with me and he goes oh well you know my wife would play t-. i'm like oh my god you know so i start freaking <laughs> out the following the following day she comes in and so i'm just like doing the the uh, Wayne's World, oh, you know, doing the prey to her like this, and she's just going, and she's saying like, oh, it's so embarrassing, stop it, and I'm like, you are, te-, you know, and I'm just teasing her, and so it was, it was nice to get to sort of like do a, a completely, you know, professional, kind of buddy meeting with her rather than like a fan meeting, you know, so it was real nice. We just chit chatted in the in the makeup trailer, and I was like just drilling it with questions and she was lovely so that was really cool excellent she, well she fitted yeah. that outfit very snugly so she didn't fair she much. did she did but i didn't mention that because scott was giving me the side eye man i tell you <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. But, uh, well, yeah good stuff matt and what I'm are you like working the, on what, or me. what are you working on Eamon? yeah me. oh i'm just doing i'm actually not doing any illustrations at the moment i'm doing all kinds of packaging design for arh studios for zeta line of statues oh um, nice i don't i i generally don't like I gave up graphic design when I did club flyers years and years ago. But on occasion, oh, yeah. I do like to work in the things that I like. And, yeah. you know, often sometimes I just put myself forward. And more often than not, thankfully, these companies say, oh, yes, I would love to do this. So I've been cool. doing, I'm going to be doing all the Frazetta stuff for the ARH studios. And the Death Dealer 1 is up on the big horse. And they're going, like, quarter scale in that as well. And that's going to be interesting. Oh, nice. So by oh, the, that they, the, they, the Death Dealer on the horse one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're going yeah, quarter nice. scale on that, dude. Quarter scale. So it's it's, it's a That's beast ridiculous. of a thing. So just, you can check check on my Facebook. So, yeah, doing I'll that. And out. obviously, I'll, I'll be continuing on working with the PCS as well and all the He-Man uh, licensing stuff as well. So Nice. T- 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 ticking away with those. Yeah, hopefully, uh, we'll, 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 see where, we'll see where things go. But it's, it's, yeah, like, it's exciting. Like, Steph, like Stefan said, good time to be a nerd, man. It is a good time <laughs> to be a nerd. And it's a good time to actually have, uh, you know, to be actually working on this stuff. I mean, you yeah. know, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure, you, have you actually worked on anything official yet mass for masses of the universe have you done anything no official? but i'm i'm i've got a i've got a bloodhound this guy i know who is a i mean he's ridiculous he's a bloodhound and i've got it you know i've i've, I've said dude track this down track it track the numbers of the guys who's doing it who's on the design team so i've got him on the case so hopefully yes. i mean because there is nothing there is, i mean that that's i could retire i just walk away i just yeah, go and live in the gutter done. i wouldn't even worry about it anymore yeah, if i could that. do a beast man or a merman makeup or a skeletal makeup you know I'd just go, all right, I'm done. Okay, you know. <laughs> that would be so nice. Course, be Stefan, you must be delighted as well working on, on, on He-Man as well. I mean, is it, obviously, is it one of your favorite things to be working on, you think? Oh, yeah, like, the, this This is, you know, this is, um, the, the, there's project that you love, and then there's project that's basically, you know, one of those dream come true bucket list type of things, you know, and <laughs> exactly. this, is, this is one of those things, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was, I'm delighted as well with some of the stuff I've been so I'm very, extremely grateful. But thank you very much, Stefan, for joining us and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, and for taking time off your crazy schedule. Uh, I hope folks have enjoyed our diversity episode of the Hot Toy Cast. And as with any high-end collectibles action figures, please do always handle yourself with care. Matt, would you like to say goodnight to our people, please? Good night, people. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Stephen? Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Everything comes to he who waits. And I have waited so very long for this moment.